and I just got done working on the sled, well, a few days ago. And it's about 45 degrees today, so it's not a good day to go sledding anyway, so I thought I'd make an introduction for this video. The reason I replaced the bearings on the axle and even the jack shaft was that I read that if the speedometer stopped working on this model sled, chances are the bearings were worn out and going out of round. The axle was rotating around inside the bearing housing and it would shear the speedometer cable pin. It's about like that. So sure enough, my speedometer cable pin, the, the, the key was sheared. But as it turns out, it's because they didn't, uh, whoever the previous owner was, did not grease the lower bearing cup where the speedometer sending unit is. It dried out, the speedometer sending unit seized up, and that caused the pin to shear, no speedometer. The bearings were dry, but they weren't loose and all banging around and stuff. They still would have held up for a while, but they desperately needed some grease. So it's probably best that I took them out and put some brand new ones in. So in the video, we'll see how to take the suspension out, the track, remove the axle by sliding it out of the chain case side, dropping it down and then sliding it out the other side and putting the new bearings on the drive axle and the jack shaft itself. It is quite a process, but if you're determined and you have a few days time to work on it off and on, you can get it done. All right, so thanks for watching my videos. Okay, well, we got step one of axle bearing replacement underway. The track and suspension has been removed from the tunnel. Now it's just time to pull it out of the track. Okay, well, got the suspension out and greased. There's a grease fitting here, another one down in the back there, one here in the middle, and there's one right up here next to the shock which I greased before I moved the shock. I actually moved it from this forward mount, which, for, which uh, it has a softer ride, into this upper mount, which should give it a stiffer ride, put more weight on the front part of the track, hoping to take some of the weight off the skis, because they seem to be plowing into the snow and uh, causing the sled to go here and there on its own. Also, I adjusted the limiter strap into the middle hole or the B hole. I believe they're labeled A, B, C from Polaris. And they don't recommend using C with it all the way extended if you're using the different mounts. And by different mounts, mounting holes, I should say, I'm going to uh, at some point drill a new hole. Uh, inside, there's a steel template that's already drilled. So I'm just going to uh, pick the I think it's uh, one through five I think it's the number four hole but I'll double check in the manual and I'll redrill that also instead of using this upper mount I'll be using this lower mounting bracket you can just barely see right up under here okay there it is but anyway so the sled will be a little bit higher off the ground and also Polaris recommends if you do use the different mounting holes to put bolts and washers through these holes to, that you're not using to help stiffen up the tunnel itself with those steel plates in there. So that's what I'm gonna do later on, but next, now that the suspension is greased and repainted here and there, a little touch up was done on some of the black parts, uh, gotta get that track out. So I'll have to go under the hood, take different things apart so we can get the axle out. Okay, as you can see, I've removed the exhaust so this whole area is empty. Make it easier to get to the chain case cover and the pulleys that are inside. So see you later exhaust system for now. Okay, well, I've got the chain case cover off. The gasket looks okay, but it was uh, very low on fluid. It just had a little bit in the very bottom. Uh, I don't think it was even enough to lubricate the chain. And also upon inspection, the chain is set tighter than the uh, shop manual specs suggest. There's a certain amount of free play that's supposed to be available right here. And it's not, it's tight. It's, it really isn't much free play, what you would call free play at all. So I'll be addressing that when I put it back together. But the jam nut and bolt for the chain tensioner has got to be loosened up 
once I get the sprocket nuts uh, bolts loose, once I get them loosened up, I can loosen the chain and take the sprockets off. So just make a note of the chain being too tight and we'll go over the chain correct specs when we put it back together, but it's getting there. Okay, as you can see, both sprockets are off. Half inch bolts held each one on along with a uh, special kind of washer on the top and bottom. And once I took the chain and sprockets off, I took them off together and laid them out over here exactly the way they came off. So that when I put it back together, that's the side that'll be facing out inside the chain case. But I guess the axle is ready to be pulled out now. And it's easier to loosen up these half inch bolts that hold the sprockets and the sprockets just slid right off. They're not, they weren't stuck on there at all. But it's easier to undo those half inch bolts by using the brake on the sled. Squeeze the brake handle, which uh, locks up the disc brake and that holds the chain and everything steady so that you can undo those, otherwise it tries to turn the whole track. So it's much easier using the brake as an assistant and loosening up those bolts. So that part of it's done. I guess we're moving on. Okay, well, I got the drive axle out basically by sliding, I, I think I slid it this way, out of the chain case, dropped that end down, and then slid this end out. At first it wouldn't go because this flange and the old bearing was on the end of the shaft and I thought I'd have to undo this this collar that has a hex bolt. Uh, but then after wiggling it around a little bit trying to put it back up in the tunnel to straighten it back out again to get to the hex, the lock hex, um, the, the bearing wiggled its way right off the end of the shaft by itself. So there's what the old bearing looks like. I'll have to dig the new bearing out, see if it looks anything like this. I'm not sure if it comes in this flange or, or, or what, but we'll find out. But anyway, I'm going to loosen up the hex screws and get this collar loose so that once it's reinstalled on the sled, I can uh, adjust this sleeve. Well, more good news, everybody. Thought I'd have to kind of whack that bearing out through this flange and after just two hits with the hammer the flange separated into two pieces so that's how it comes apart and that's how the old bearing comes out and I do believe it is with this uh, bit of a flange on the or ring on the inside here I believe that goes to the inside against the the stop on the axle and that the flat side goes to the outside as I remember it taking it off the sled. So that was fairly easy to get the old bearing out of this flange. It's two pieces and it pops right apart. Okay back on the chain case side these two washers came off the end of the drive axle and they just kind of fell off and landed in the bottom of the chain case. So I've got those, these two washers in hand. I'm gonna put those with the sprocket. And also, I'm gonna to try to remove the upper bearing as well. And this sleeve is on the upper bearing shaft, just like that, with the raised, the smaller end to the outside. Just like that if you can can you see that all right? Okay, just like that. So that was slid all the way in and then the sprocket goes up against it but and then there's a there's a Circle clip That holds that bearing in a same thing down at the bottom another circle clip down there that holds that one in Then I'm not sure what it's going to take to remove that bearing If it's pressed in or if it's just going to push right out through we'll find out Okay, well now that the air box has been removed, we can get at the, the jack shaft. Here it is. It's fairly loose. Got another lock collar up against the bearing here. And these three nuts, of course, to take out. Uh, actually, I pointed at two because the third one is inside the tunnel. So I have to go underneath the sled to get at that. 
but there's plenty of room under the underneath there now with the track out of the way so that's next I guess let's try it well we're looking at the end of the jack shaft right here and uh, after using a hammer and uh, and a pry bar kind of setup finally got the bearing to free up off the shaft and it's fairly loose now it was sliding around on its own just, just a minute ago there it goes just got some old grease on it so it's running kind of slow but I'll replace this one feels awful gunky stiff so I will get this side replaced on the jack shaft where the secondary clutch goes but the other side I am really having a hard time separating the getting the shaft to pull in this direction to come out of the brake disc and the bearing on the other side I don't see a circle clip holding it together anything like that uh, it's just pressed on there in such a way that it doesn't want to come out all right well here we have the secondary clutch just about ready to go back together I'm gonna to put some lube on the shaft here some lithium grease okay that'll let this half slide back down also make note where the spring hole is that's where the other end of the spring goes in this hole in the bottom so we'll just wiggle it around and slide it it's got good also I've taken out two of the shims these two shims were down between the two clutch halves and my belt is running a little on the loose side probably due to a little bit of wear but I've taken both of these shim washers out to take out some of the slack in the drive belt if it takes out too much slack and the belt is too tight I can always take this back apart and put one of the shims back in and also the manual says to leave one washer down in here at all times which we do have it's, it doesn't look it but there it is right there I almost think there's a, a second one underneath that but it's hard to tell if that's a shim or just the part of the housing itself but there's one washer so we're leaving at least one putting this back on with the hole oriented on this side for the spring underneath the uh, helix we have four holes and it looks like in the service manual these are numbered as looking down on the helix one two three four so if we turn it over that's four three two one factory setting is two that's where I'm going to put it back together at so we'll put the spring in number two position then this end of the spring has got to go in that hole in the secondary clutch and first I want to get some lube on this on the ramps and, and whatnot before I do put it back together but once this helix goes down on there over the spring there's a washer and retaining clip that go on on top of that and the secondary should be all done okay one more thing I forgot to mention is there is a keyway inside this uh, helix that has to match up with the shaft otherwise you won't go anywhere <laughs> it'll just be spinning around so don't forget to put this keyway back in before you put the uh, top washer right here and lock ring back on this has got to go in first okay now what I did is I used this piece of 2x4 put it against the edge of the helix turned it so that it's past the ramps and then it started to drop down then I turned it enough so the keyway would line up I put in the key pin and then with my knees on the 2x4 block of wood holding the helix down I put on the outer washer and the lock ring okay and then once I release pressure it came back up and now I can take the two halves and turn them and see how it springs right back okay so that should be good to go back on the sled all right I'm gonna go ahead and put another dab of lithium grease on the secondary shaft for the secondary clutch to slide onto. Secondary clutch should have some free play in it 
be able to slide back and forth so the belt will center it on its own. It'll be self-centering for the most part as long as we have enough free play in the secondary clutch. And we've got a bushing here that goes back in. And right here we have the secondary clutch bolt which will be tightened to 12 foot-pounds. Let me line up the key to the secondary clutch here. To the shaft. There it is. Okay, I just pushed, oops, I pushed, pushed the key out and the spacer. So let's uh, try that again. Okay, I've got my torque wrench set to 12 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and that's one way to tighten it up. shaft and there's 12 foot-pounds okay okay from having the chain case off I had to take these bolts out the manual recommends a, just a dab of Loctite on each one just to drop okay so that's what we'll do. We don't want the brakes coming apart. All four of them are now blue Loctited. Now I'm just going to turn them down until they... Okay, back it off a little bit. I'm turning it till it's tight, back it off. Turn till it's tight, back it off. Turn till it's tight, back it off. Alright. I'm going to have my torque wrench ready. It's set at 8 foot-pounds. The manual recommends squeezing the brake lever. Okay, and what that'll do is position any slack. See how this can wiggle around? Any slack will help center this right over the brake disc by squeezing the brake lever. Hold it squeezed. Let's give each one a, a turn till it Gives us our eight pounds, which isn't much. There's eight. Okay, we'll check it again in a minute. The brake lever still has pressure. I'm squeezing the brake lever and one more. Okay, now with the brake lever released, I'm going to go over all four again. Eight pounds. Eight pounds, eight pounds, and eight pounds. And now the disc brake is all set and ready to go. All right, moving right along, got the two spacers, shim washers for the bottom pulley. I've also got this kind of funky looking spacer with the thin side out for the top pulley. Also make a note that the lock rings against the bearing on the far side and on the drive axle also are both loose at this time. I can spin them. They slide back and forth on the slot on the on the axle shaft. That's the way they're supposed to be. Okay, I got the top sprocket on. Now it's a matter of getting the bottom sprocket lined up here. Again. And back on again, we hope. There it goes. Okay. And we got plenty of slack in the chain because we have to put the chain tensioner in, of course. Okay, I'm going to put Loctite on both the upper and lower bolts with the big squarish washers that go with them. Reinstall those, put the chain tensioner back in, and we'll set the chain to the proper tension place but it, it may move a little bit because there is supposed to be some slack 
in the chain. How do we do that? Well, we tighten up the adjustment bolt. Here's the jam nut, this, the adjustment bolt, until, until it's tight. And there you go, it's tight right there. And if I try to move the disc brake back and forth, as you can see, I think, I hope you can see, this side is plenty tight. Now the shop manual recommends, the service manual, a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch play back and forth on the slack side. Okay, so we've got it so that the chain is up against the chain tensioner, pushing on this side, wiggling the brake disc, gives us slack on this side. And as you can see, almost got a quarter of an inch. Let me see if I can secure a ruler. Okay, well, I've got my tape measure. Looks like we're at one and an eighth with the chain relaxed. If I push this way, I can get it to one just fine. If I push this way, one and a quarter just fine. So that is my quarter inch free play right there. I can go a quarter inch back and forth. And I'm going to loosen that just a pinch more. Now this is just finger tight. It'd be nice to know how to do this without the cover on, but unfortunately there's no real way to do that. So loosen it just a little bit. Hold on to the brake lever here. Well, actually I want to move the brake. Make sure the slack is gone. Okay, by turning it reverse. All right, now I've got the slack all on the back side of the chain. I'm right about in the middle of the chain. Definitely get to one inch there and a little over a quarter inch there. Yeah, a little bit past one inch. So that's about almost my between a quarter and three eighths play. And as you can see, I can wiggle that. Okay, that's pretty much how tight you want it with, a, with that much slack. So finger tightening it and then back it off, not even an eighth of a turn. It's just a matter of backing it off just a, just a little bit if you can see. There's tight and backing it off just that much. Just a little bit of a turn. Check the slack. And there it is. I've got my quarter inch to three eighths inch play back and forth on the chain with it finger tight, then back off just a pinch. So that's good to remember. So that if the chain case cover is on with filled with lube, I don't have to empty that out and make a big mess. Now the key is to get this bolt to stay still while you tighten up the jam nut. So I'm going to get a couple of uh, wrenches and do that. Okay, with a reverse motion on the brake disc, I've still got my quarter inch play back and forth. I measured it with the tape measure. You can see it's kind of floppy. Quarter inch, pretty much a little over an eighth of an inch this way and an eighth of an inch this way. And we've got our quarter inch free play. And it did take, uh, I think it was the third try, adjusting the jam nut against the bolt before I got it right because this bolt wants to go tends to turn with the jam nut so twice I tried it it was too tight had to back off the jam nut back off the bolt a little bit more try it again on the third try I've got it that's where it should be so I guess we can move on to putting the cover back on Okay, one other thing I want to point out with the bearings is that the locking sleeve has a thick side, okay, if you can see that, and a thin side up top here. And same thing on the bearing. If you look, the bottom is thicker than the top. And that's made that way for a reason, so that when you put them together and you go to slide them together, uh, they won't go in, in certain ways, okay? It's hard to do without the axle in the middle, but It'll just kind of butt up against each other until you turn the ring and at some point that ring will slide onto the bearing. Okay, that's what you want. Then you lock it down. That'll make sure 
that the bearing spins with the axle, okay? And it doesn't just spin, uh, uh, the axle doesn't just spin inside the, uh, the bearing itself. So that, this ring locks onto the bearing, make sure that it turns, and so when you put these together, if they butt up against each other, you gotta rotate it until they match up. Okay, you got that? All right. All right, maybe it's because I'm using the lower mounting hole instead of the upper mounting hole when I put the suspension back in, but it was a bear to get it in here. And what I found is taking these torsion rods and bringing them out of the cradle, folding them down, you can use these to kind of move that axle around up here, this shaft, to line it up with the hole on both sides. So both of these are hanging down past the track. All the bolts are in, just a matter of tightening them up now. And then uh, tensioning the track, because it's obviously gonna be way too loose. I had to even loosen up the, uh, the bolt all the way so the rear axle could come all the way forward and give me just as much slack in the track as I could get to get this back up. I've also got, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a car jack underneath the track. I use that to lift it up, made things a lot easier. So, got to tension the track and then align the track pretty soon here, as soon as I get a few more things buttoned up. Okay, I'm ready to start tightening the axle now, but before I do, on the axle itself are these collars and they have an indentation or an opening in them. And this one right now is, is right up top here. So it's a slot in the collar that's on this shaft. So that slot has got to be turned so the bolt goes right in the middle of it, okay? Otherwise, if that turns after you've adjusted your track tension, it'll go to that open spot, the, the axle will slide forward, your track will loosen up, and you won't have the right tension, and it'll start flopping around. So, okay, I've moved this collar so that it is facing the bolt now. So when I start tightening this bolt, it's gonna go right into the notch in the collar. And I'm gonna go around now and do the other side.